Only Cup team for a third time, five years after his last appearance. Your thoughts on that, please? No, he deserves it. He earned it. Um, I like him. Wish, and you know, he wanted to play a better match in his last and remain in this event. But you know, he put in the time, and that's what it takes. Not disappointed there at all. Yeah, and like his previous two Moscone Cup appearances, it will be in Las Vegas. He was on the winning team in 2009, but in 2017, it was the last of those eight successive defeats for the Americans. A rare miss on the one ball there from Tyler. Is the eight going to drop? It looks like it. So I wouldn't doubt he pulls out the jump cue here, Michael, to start. If Tyler, you know, if you had to, you know, tell him something about this match, which is undoubtedly how he wants to play anyways, is, you know, take the reins on some situ situations. You know, go ahead, even though some may say he should push out. I don't mind the jump here. Tyler Steyer is still in that Moscone race himself. He has to win this match and then one more. And if he does that, he will claim an automatic spot on Jeremy's team. If he loses, then obviously his chance will be gone. And that would confirm that Skylar Woodward would join Shane Van Boning and Oscar Dominguez as the three automatic qualifiers. And then it will be up to Jeremy to have one or two sleepless nights trying to figure out who the other two are going to be. Well, I've already had plenty of those, but happy to see so many make it through, you know, the competition. They're progressing. And it's be hard for the lefty not to shoot at this, but he's going to pull on the reins here early. And it looks like he's done a fine job. This is one part of the game I think Tyler's improved at tremendously is the battle side, like kicking and a little bit of moving, realizing when he's got the worst of it, when he's got the best of it. People think it's a lot more cut and dry in nine ball, and it's really not. Especially at the higher level. So this, the last match to get underway today. It's one of four places still up for grabs in the last 16 tomorrow. Yeah, and Michael, this type of kick shot with the 3-9 kind of covering that side rail, it is a bit of a big pocket with the five there. Probably a soft kick, two rails underneath the one, just trying to lay the one on the side rail and maybe just lengthen the game a little bit if you're Tyler. Not only if you go firm, you could easily scratch off the bottom of the one in that upper right-hand corner. Could go one rail at it, trying to make it, but that's a hard one to judge. Moscone Cup conversations today. One man who has no particular reason to get involved in it is Joshua Filler. His place on the team was confirmed back in August. And Josh laying the cue ball down there, sizing up the three in the upper corner. May still end up moving the cue ball around off the two. But the reason why he's not so in love with that is the two's a little bit of a tight pocket with the five there. Certain angles, it really helps you, but I think he may try to play short side. This could get a little goofy. Only reason being, he can't really manipulate because half the pocket's covered up. So he has to go a little bit more about what the shot looks like versus what he wants to do. And he has that in his bag as well. Uh-oh. Now, this is, uh, you may see him 
jack up here and play this ball a little more firm than you would suspect. Reason being is if he rolls this, that's when it can double kiss. He wants some speed on this three ball. I think anyways. Yeah, like that. You want, even though you're having a tougher shot on the four, Josh Filler, of course, knows this four ball. He shoots about 50 times a day probably, but, but you want to guarantee that three ball there. You probably know that lady we saw a moment ago was Josh's wife, Pia Filler. They actually both won on the Euro Tour just last week in Slovenia. Josh winning his fourth men's Euro Tour title and Pia her first ever. And behind her, the two grand old men of German pool, Ralph Suke and Torsten Homan. So it's quite a stellar audience for this one. Yeah, pretty much standing room only around the table. And Joshua Filler, former winner of this title, wins the opening rack against Tyler Steyer. Alex Kazakis has had a wonderful day, that great win over Shane Van Boney, one of the best victories of his career earlier today. In the last few minutes, he's completed another win. He's beaten Thomas Kaplan by nine racks to five. He's into the last 16 of the US Open, and there he will play Mark Beisterbosch of the Netherlands tomorrow. A lot of hardware in that picture. German hardware. In terms of trophies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ralph Suke won this title just the once, 20 years ago. Swiftly underway again. Yeah, and once, once Josh gets settled with the break, you know, there's going to be a little more tactical battles in this type of format, and that's a great thing, but... You know, also, you're going to have to come with tougher shots after the break, which is really going to, you know, play into his hands a little more than some, or most, rather. So I'll probably just stun this. May draw up underneath where he's standing, but Josh really likes to stun the ball. Joshua Filler. Celebrated his 25th birthday in Slovenia during that Euro Tour event that he won. But it didn't take him long in life to join that fairly elite group of players who won both the World Championship and the US Open. Managed to tick off both of those titles within a few months of each other, almost four years ago now. And he's gotten himself in a little pickle here. He may have to shoot the seven from some distance. We'll see. He was happy to get that much out, out of the cue ball. I like him taking this little extra time. He's played pretty fast through this you know, last rack and a half. I'm not saying he doesn't do that sometimes, but for the most part, I haven't seen a ton of that this year. This is a big shot early. Yeah, I think there's, once he gets into this mode, I think it's really hard to figure him that he's going to miss. Well, we knew that was going to happen, didn't we? Oh, After he, what you he just may have said. It. Oh, no way. No. no. Not to be. Yeah, he really had no chance, huh? I think it was the other day you were really bigging up Shane Van Boning and everything you said was true. You said he was one of the all-time greats or whatever. And then he played pretty much the worst shot he's played all year. Okay, so, bit of a gift for Steyer then. Gotta stay with Filler, he's such a great front runner. All about rhythm and fluency. You've gotta stop him building it up. Well, if we see a couple early mistakes, it wasn't long ago these two teed off in the World Games, the first round, and Tyler really outplayed Josh that match to get up a big lead and, you know, didn't have a, tons of chances, but had a couple to finish him, and it didn't happen, and Josh went on to win the medal, but it could get a little mental for Josh. Could have done without this, being right up against the rail. 
A job done, and it's one all. Chang Young Lin, runner up six years ago in this championship, closing in on a place in tomorrow's last 16, 7 2 now. He leads John Morrow of Canada. And Wu Kun Lin with a 6 4 lead over Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. He's had a great day already with his place being confirmed on the European Moscone Cup team for the first time. Margaret Pfeffel over there, Tyler Starr's wife. She was playing in the event. She played very well in her match against Shane Van Boney. Yeah, I have to look at the numbers, but that may be if Chang wins four Chinese Taipei players into the final 16. Well, they've maybe got there's two going on the that are, have the lead. Yeah, two, two there. Right? They, they had five players in the last 64, all of whom won in that round. So they had five coming into this round. And if they both win, those two who are leading at the moment, four of the five will be in the last 16 tomorrow. Will this man be? It's one all. Oh, I was getting a bit excited about the nine there for a moment, Jeremy. Yeah, it was moving. The two didn't quite open up, I don't think, anyways. Close. I can see it. Sorry, Michael. I'm just going to say that I always think it's worth reminding the viewers, just in case anyone's new to the game, if you pop the nine ball off the break, that is it. You've won the rack. And also, if you're new, after the break shot, there's a rollout or a push out that you can call. You can move the cue ball anywhere you want, and then the incoming player has the option to take the shot or pass it back, which probably is a decent option here, some type of push out. Now, if he really felt good about it, it lays pretty decent to kind of bank the two to the top rail. A lot of high right English and come three rails behind the seven with the cue ball, but if you don't bury the cue ball, you're going to be in trouble. I think that's what he's kind of setting up for here. He's trying to maybe tie up the 5-6. Maybe something good happens with that. Otherwise, yeah, I don't think Josh is going to give this back, though. I don't think so. Pretty smart push, really. Had a chance to, like I said, tie up the 5-6. Wow. Well, that was a mistake and, and maybe one that more than Tyler would have made. You can't roll out to a pocketable ball for Josh. So I think the nine being there, of course, he squeezed it in on the outer part of the pocket. We saw that on the replay, but so maybe he overlooked that because he certainly wouldn't give up, give up a shot with the cue ball not on the rail. Mentioned that he won the gold in the World Games, beat Sanyam Pelovanovic, Bosnia and Herzegovina in the final. Also won gold in the straight pool division at the European Championship this year. He's been winning all sorts of titles in all sorts of countries. Yeah, it looks like he wants to play a safety, and man, he can't just bank that ball down table. Not with the five, six, seven the way it is. He's got, oh, what a shot. And he teach all of us something there. Even though he was jacked up, Michael, he didn't let up on it. He went out and swung the cue, and that's one big key to when you're jacked up. We kind of get a little tentative most of the time, trying to be very accurate hitting the cue ball. And if you got to cut the ball, that's not going to get it. Interesting to see how he plays this five. Is he going to run into the six? That's what I think. Pretty unlucky to get snookered there. Five hit the dead heart of the pocket. This two rail kick looks nasty to me. I might try to kick this one in cross corner. Just kick to the, the right long rail. He's going to try and separate the balls kicking the six down table. And that's the reason why on that kick, you can hit it a lot of good ways and still give up a shot. And you really never gave yourself a chance to make it. 
So an error on the push-out call from Steyer. Yet, here he is, back at the table, with a chance to lead for the first time in the match. A match where I'm sure everyone would agree he goes in as second favourite. this shot where the eight's at, but you just got to drop the cue ball behind it. Good thing is you don't need much angle, if any, with the nine there, so you can get pretty pretty straight on here. Maybe he wants the cue ball cleaned. Slava Bozilova from Bulgaria as our referee. Had a bit of a result here after that miss. Mm, yeah, a lot of places that ball could have went. Went right up behind the nine. It's hard to figure how when the ball's so close to the rail that you catch that inner point as you cross the side pocket, but it sure seems to happen. Now is the eight playable off the nine? Oh, you can see a little piece of this as well. Is he trying to run the cue ball three rails behind the nine, chipping the eight to Oh, he's playing it twice. I didn't realize he had that much, and what a shot. At least he's going to make Tyler earn it. Yeah, he had a lot more of that eight ball. And again, pool players are so impressive so, because, I mean, that's never a shot you're practicing, right? That's just instinct, kind of seeing what's possible. And then, of course, seeing what's possible is the first part, but then pulling the trigger on it. And I think he can see the right side of this. If you can see the right side, but not enough to bank it back down, what he's doing is he's trying to bring the cue ball three rails to where that chalk is at on the bottom rail and hoping the eight kind of gets a little covered up one way or another by the nine. And if he hits it hard enough, he, he's got a great shot. Just a little under hit. He was hoping the eight would roam out, like I said, a little behind the nine. Chance missed then for Tyler Steyer. Joshua Filler leads for the second time by a single rack at 2-1. As I said, it's been a great day for Francisco Sanchez Ruiz already. He was so delighted when it was confirmed to him earlier that he was definitely going to get one of the automatic spots on the European Moscone Cup team. He'll be making his debut in a few weeks' time in Las Vegas. But he still wants more. He still wants to be here tomorrow for the last 16 of the US Open. And he's still in with a great chance because he's just won the 11th rack against Wu Kun Lin to close to 6-5 down. Chang Young Lin, though, is on the hill now. 8-2, he leads John Mora, the Canadian's campaign, on the brink. Uh, he made the one on the break. He's going to have a nice cut shot on the two. I think it passes the four. This overhead should show us. Nine ball got a little movement. I'll tell you about Chang. You know, kind of forgot about him out of sight, out of mind kind of thing during pandemic, right? But 
You just take a poll around these 256 great players that were in this event. And he'd be way up there on the charts as far as one of the better players. Oh, without a doubt. In the single digits for me. Anyways. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. And he played so great against Van Bonen at the World Championship. That was a wonderful quarterfinal. Yeah, now, Josh is looking at, you know, first off, does the kiss shot on the nine go? That's what I would look at first if I was Josh, because getting that position, a little difficult with the seven there later on, shooting the five, but what he's looking at now is there's somewhere I can get on the four to open the six nine because the five's up there in the corner pocket. I think that's what he's trying to look at right now, and I think he got pretty ideal to do so. Wouldn't be surprised he goes into these balls. Yeah, just like that. The nine, uh, the eight goes, I think it's tight. Can't think of everything, Josh. But also, another part of the game that's a little different than it was for a while. You're going to have to break balls out sometimes. You're going to have to maneuver, make some banks. Now, is he going to go into the eight here? Wow. You would figure something unlucky is, you know, would be hard to have happen from here. But with the, yeah, I was like, I think it could get a problem. Yeah, that eight ball, and Josh was very capable of playing position behind that eight. I don't know if I go into that ball right there, Michael. I think he was taking a big chance. Yeah, and that chalk was not put on the rail in the manner of a man who's happy with the outcome of that shot. And he's going to spin this in. A little bit of right English. Oh, he could see it. Never mind. And not saying it was a terrible play going into the eight. But, I mean, it's not like the eight was jammed up. It was open. They, there were pockets. So we have our first break and run of the match. And Joshua Filler opens a bit of daylight. He leads Tyler Steyer by three racks to one. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz has now drawn level with Wu Kun Lin over on table two. That's six all. And Chang Yun Lin still on the hill at 8-2 against John Mora. Here is a look at what's going on over on two. He'll be well able for the Moscone environment, you would think, Jeremy, now that he's guaranteed to be in us, FSR. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd say anybody's totally tailor-made for the Moscone, but I think FSR is definitely a guy that would be a big asset to whatever team he was on and, you know, whoever he's playing with, singles, doubles, whatever it is. And probably no one in the room needs a bit boost of energy, but to get that, you know, that nod into the Moscone Cup, your first Moscone Cup, right? Right before this match, I believe, anyways. And uh, he's trying not to be denied. I want to watch that match on table two. It's on the Matchroom YouTube channel. FSR, incidentally, will be the second Spanish player ever to appear in the Moscone Cup after his good friend David Alcady. Played such a big role in last year's win in North London. Chang Young Lin is into the last 16. It's all over now. He's beaten John Mora of Canada by nine racks to two. Not a player who would be easy to beat by that margin. No, he probably didn't let John shoot much. I mean, Chang's one of those guys for sure when he gets that starter down. He keeps control of the cue ball, but he can come with the shot. Jumps the ball incredible, breaks great, kicks well. I can't believe he's not considering the bottom rail here. Normally when the three's pinned down here and you're in a tough rollout position, you want to roll out to the bottom rail where maybe he can go for a shot, but not only is the shot tough, but position's unlikely. And maybe Josh is worried about getting it back. I'm not sure. I'll tell you. 
Tyler may go for a long rail bank here. This sounds crazy, but I mean, there's a few safeties here that are delicate. You could chip the two over to the left long rail and go to the side rail, kind of just using the five as a blocker. That's probably the easiest safety. And it has a lot of value because you could snooker him very well. He's going to jack up and try and fire this in the upper left. Draw the cue ball one row over between the eight and nine. These are huge moments in the match for Tyler Steyer. 3 1, okay, that's manageable. And it's at a stage where if you let it get much bigger than that, or any bigger in fact, suddenly it starts to look very daunting. Well, that was a great shot. That should be on the highlight reel come the end of the week. But a little surprised Josh gave up the bottom half of the cue ball. And the reason being is Tyler's drawing the ball back here, you know, so you don't figure the two to hang at that speed, probably get away from the pocket. So a little bit of a backdoor safety if he happened to miss it. I don't know. I might just go into the nine here and keep it simple. You're going to open the six up even more moving the nine. Yeah. I like that shot. Tyler Steyer, 27 years of age, born New Year's Day, 1995. The only American left in the event now. There were seven in the last 64. Three made it to this round. Oscar Dominguez and Greg Hogue have both been eliminated already. Hats off to both those guys. A nice tournament. Of course, they would both like to have that last match back, but they certainly played some really good matches on the way there. Well, it's just a hair of an angle. A little let up there. And I understand that sometimes you, the overhit would be the real problem, but you don't want that let up to start creeping in, Michael. Yeah, if you've got that at an early stage of the match, real danger it's going to be there when the pressure gets to its greatest, which it will if he gets close to victory here. So a good effort this from Tyler Steyer. Had a great shot to open the door for this. And he's seen it out from there. Good response. He's back to one behind at 3-2. Still 6-all between Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Wu Kun Lin. Sanchez Ruiz, the only Spanish player left in the championship now. Jonas Suto Camino did get to this round, but was beaten 9-4 by Max Lechner. Looking ahead to the last 16, we know most of the matches now. Chris Melling is going to play Lee Van Corteza. That will be the first match on the TV table in the last 16 stage. Max Lechner against Roland Garcia. It's a possibility of an all-Philippines clash in the quarterfinals because the winners of those two matches will meet each other. Big day for Yanni Uski playing Ko Ping Chung. We know that Si Cha Chen will face Mario He. Carlo Biado will be up against Conrad Yusushin. And Mark Boisterbosch is going to face Alex Kazakis. Still a couple of places to be filled. Yeah, that's the speed he wants on the break. Uh, elevated here on the two, so super tough to start. But the la his last break, I thought, a little light on the speed. Here, much more movement on all the balls, which is what you want. You know, you're trying to make the one on the side. You want a nice spread. Maybe you make another one or two. You never know. Does he go for this, though? I mean, you don't want to hit it so easy to where, you know, you're kind of holding position 
before the nine ball with the cue ball, I mean, that would be ideal. But being elevated like that, that's a tall task. And it's close to a scratch, naturally, with a high ball. think so no and to be all to be fair after pocketing one heck of a shot he would have had a tough rollout position i mean he's not i mean he's an underdog to make this three but not terribly i mean it's not that far away from the pocket he's a great jumper deserved a bit better fortune than that you might yeah. argue having been a bit unlucky with the previous shot slightly fuller contact on the five and that yeah. shot would have been much more straightforward. Yeah, but you got to feel good about how he's feeling if you're pulling for USA. I mean, takes on that tough shot. I mean, it didn't work out. It's going to give up a shot, it looks like. But, you know, a tough another tough shot's going to come up later in this match for Tyler Steyer, and hopefully he gets a little bit bigger reward. discount the team matches where everyone's up against everyone they've only been in direct combat in the Moscone Cup a couple of times there was a doubles that Steyer and Skylar Woodward lost to Filler and Jason Shaw last year but the previous night they'd met in singles for the only time and Steyer actually won that yeah we'll see how he cues this you know, at your pool room, you want to hit it with a high ball because you can separate the balls, but you have to make the adjustment for it out here. Very typical kick that's missed long. Now, if you wanted to hold the line, you just hit a little more center ball, kind of downward on the cue ball. Don't want it rotating so much. But if he cues high, he's going to have to aim pretty short and kind of bend into the three a little bit. He's rolling it. It'll be kind of a medium speed, not too, too heavy, not too light. Wants to get the three to the end rail below the four if possible, if he doesn't make it in the side. Or okay, he's hitting a high ball, so not easy. Said. Yeah, I think I like the other kick better. I mean, I understand why he's 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 looking at this. He and I have talked about that other kick shot a lot of times. It's hard to judge, believe it or not, but but this one not any easier. I think this gives more reward in a few different ways. Still bent on him. That's why you have to aim very short on that one. It's almost an illusion, really. Yeah, I could have got more out of that for sure. I won't be happy there. Not with ball in hand. Josh is so good with the stun, he'll measure up going between the eight and nine, maybe, but 
He's off a little bit pocketing this ball. He could easily catch the eight or nine coming out with the cue ball. Maybe tie up the six. That's why pocketing the ball is so huge. Have that talent that he has. He didn't think about the third rail to get a little closer to the six and then maybe fall straight in with no angle to get on the seven. He just sacrifices with distance to guarantee the angle on the six just because he has those weapons, right? Backs himself for every pot that's there. He was one of five Germans to make it through to single elimination, but the only one of those five to get any further. Torsten Homan, Moritz Neuhausen, Typhon Tabor, and Ralph Suke were all beaten earlier today. The current standard bearer for the German game is too clear once again at 4 2. Wu Kun Lin is back in front now against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz over on table two. 7 6 that one. Must be a big disappointment to you, Jeremy. I know it's been a great day for Oscar Dominguez. It may yet be one for Skylar Woodward as well because his place in the Moscone team will be confirmed if Tyler Steyer is beaten here. But to have only one American left in at this stage, with all the talk this week, which was justified about promising Americans coming through, it must be a real letdown. Yeah, it is. But, I mean, you know, our team, it's about staying positive and moving forward. I mean... Don't have time to really have too much of a letdown in this sport. Not only these guys getting on with more things right after this event, but we do have that Moscone coming up. So, you know, it's more about processing it and understanding, you know, how to improve and what, you know, if anything did cost us this week as players. And uh, just like I talked to Oscar, I said I'll be in communication with you. We'll talk about some things, make sure he's settled with himself. And then, you know, you know, disappointment's not really in the vocabulary too much, Michael. Yeah, good approach to have. So how was Oscar when you spoke to him? He must be absolutely thrilled to be back in the team after all this time. Yeah, Oscar, you know, um, I'm sure his kids get it out of him, but, you know, he, he has some emotion here and there, but it's he's a, you know, pretty calm guy overall, and he was certainly happy that he put in the time that he wanted to put in and he could put in. And he had some results, and he made the team. And he's going to be a, a big asset. He's going to be a veteran in many ways. And, uh, and yeah, he's motivated. A little disappointed about his last match, of course. You know, the guys, that is a little fresh on the mind, you know, when you do use the word disappointment. But um, we'd all like to have shots back. But, again, we're just going to move forward. 30th of November, Moscone Cup starts in Las Vegas. Europe looking for three in a row. The Americans determined to do everything they can to stop them. Yeah, it's going to be an incredible moment in pool. American fans have waited since 2019 to get their team back in the building. Well, that was it, 2020. It was due to be on the other side of the Atlantic anyway. Ended up being in Coventry behind closed doors. But then with the whole COVID situation still ongoing, it was kept in England for last year's staging at Alexandra Palace. And throw the results out the window. I mean, Europe definitely, uh-oh. Europe definitely earned every win in that 2020 Moscone Cup. But, you know, without the fans, without the real aura and excitement and energy, you know, it's like I'm not one to set something aside a loss like that, and I'll certainly tell them when they won, but just uh, I can discard it pretty easily. Now, last year's Moscone was a pretty darn good one, I thought. Oh, yeah, really good. Oh, look at uh -oh. this. See this isn't later. good. This isn't good. Wow. Well, just when he looked to be heading for a three-rack lead in his second break and run, this happened. Yeah, no. Curious. No. 
he's something to ask Josh later maybe, but like what was it there? It just drew more. I, he missed his mark. A lot of times when you're on a ball like that, you know, you won't even be on the line of a scratch with the cue ball. You'll make sure of it. Now, he was kind of stretching a little bit. They may have had something to do with it, but a big mistake. Look at the difference it's made. Probably only about 90 seconds ago. Looked for all the world as though Filler was going to pull away to 5-2. Scratches importing the six. And here we are, only one in it again at 4-3. Also just one in it over on table two in favor of Wu Kun Lin against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in the only other match still going on. I know what you're saying about that 2020 match. It was so strange, the fact that there was just nobody there and uh, you know everyone did their best to make it the week that it was and I guess those of us who were lucky enough to be in that bubble environment in Coventry that week it will be a story to tell people in years to come that we were there for the COVID Moscone yeah it was just odd you know it was I thought even a little more oddly tension field you know what I mean like we're all you know Europe, Team Europe and US they get along well overall you know and it was just like, uh, it was just different, much, much different, even though we're, we're there to beat each other every year and there is no high-fiving or congratulations until it's over with, you know, uh, shaking the hands or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, the 2021 was definitely something to remember. Let's not have it again, hopefully. Now, that's twice that Tyler's missed the one in the side. And e both times, I think he's just been a little light. Just, you know, the last one he hit definitely with more speed. And after a big mistake, this is a huge chance for Josh to kind of let that one go. Now, the reason why he's looking there is he'd love to be able to cut the two so the cue ball can get free of the side rail. If he draws up the side rail, well, he's kind of got to slow roll the 2-4 and hope the 2 hangs over the pocket. So I think he wants to get up to where he can cut the 2. And now he can bring the cue ball across and watch the 2 come to the bottom rail off the 4. May have a little 9 ball action here. Oh, good call. Good call. Almost. He should draw underneath him here. He's so open on the right side of the table. Don't even flirt with the eight ball. Yeah, even there, that's fine. Draw on the clear side. No reason to take a chance. Now he's perfect just to stop his ball on the purple five. choice the nines over the pocket so he can draw back for the side he can stun out he likes the corners which is why I think he is also one of the best players if not the best player in the world this is what he does Steyer so grateful for the opportunity to win the previous rack and get back to one behind Filler can just do this just shrug it off come out and win the next one so quickly you barely even notice and he's too clear again at 5-3 you mentioned there that he's possibly the best player in the world well of course the players have been accumulating points throughout the year towards the world rankings and we're pretty close now to having a full year and then we'll have our first full-on official points based ranking list now as it stands Filler has got a chance to overtake Shane Van Boning and uh, go to number one in the live rankings at the end of this event. He has to get to the semi-finals to move ahead of Van Boning. Even then, though, that might not be enough to get to number one because a couple of other players could have a say in it as well. Francisco Sanchez-Ruiz, he can overtake Van Boning by getting to the final. 
Alban Ocean came into the week at number four in the standings, but he's out. But even Mario He, if he was to win this tournament, he'd go ahead of Van Bonen and go to number one in the live rankings. So that's another big story to keep an eye on over the next few days. Yeah, one of the most consistent players and has all the shots as well. Mario He. Right, this two's going to, oh, it would have come clear, but the nine got a little bump. So he may have an edge on the two, but nothing friendly for Josh to start rack number nine. And Mario, he uh, really should have taken down Alban Ocean in that European Open. Put himself in position, just quite couldn't finish it. Oh, yeah, he was looking so strong there. Yeah, he'd like to edge this ball. He can't thin it and go around the seven. I'm not saying it's not possible, but whew, very difficult. I think, I don't know if he has enough of the two ball to come inside the seven, maybe. Difficult rollout, of course. Easy to put the cue ball up behind the seven, banking the two away, put the two behind the seven and the cue ball behind the eight, nine. What he must be worried about is if he chips the two and comes two rails inside the seven, like let's say towards the five with the cue ball, he's really got to get the snooker because the two's going to come open a little bit. Probably not for an offensive shot for Tyler, but an easy safety in return. So oh, he's going to pinch draw this. Wow. See those numbers coming up there showing how many racks have been won by the non-breaking player. It's happened in all sorts of ways. Yeah, that's the snooker I was talking about. He really has to get the snooker because the two's going to be open. Uh, it's not tight enough, maybe. It's going to go into the five, so should kind of make Tyler in a good position to play a good safety. I think that's still the right shot for Josh, going for that safety, even though it was difficult because the, the rollout to me was just giving it up, in my opinion. Now he could kick behind this with the 8-9 the way they are. He could just hit his right side of the two, bringing the cue ball up the left side rail. And it's got to go. It's the most commonly under-hit shot, especially on the safety side of things. again. Such a good crowd gathered round this table. It's all standing room and table seating, but it will be transformed into something more akin to a full-scale arena when we get down to the last 16 stage. I'll tell you what, if Tyler doesn't like this, it doesn't look like the bank's playable. Doesn't like the safety, which I think the safety's okay. We'll have another look at it here in a moment. It's a little touchy going behind the 8-9 just because of where the 2's going, but he may end up cutting this ball in is what I – I may even tell him if I was coaching him, hey, you make this all day. Just let your stroke out going back and forth with the cue ball. The 3's open. I like him shooting at this myself. And like I said earlier at the beginning of the match, you 
change that mentality to where you're going to take the match over a little bit yourself. He's not shrinking from the challenge one bit, is he? No, I mean, that's kind of how he's played all year. It's been a few things here and there that have gotten the best of him, but he's played really well. Played a lot of quality matches. He's had a few that, you know, like I said, we all kind of stumble on here and there, but. It's his best showing in one of these big field matchroom events this year. Didn't get to single elimination in the World Championship. And a long run on the one last side at the UK Open after losing his opening match to Miguel Silva. Still fell two wins short of single elimination, albeit that there were only 16 players in single elimination at the Copper Box. And went out at the last 64 stage of the European Open against Oscar Dominguez. Looks like he was sizing up three rails with the cue ball, coming inside the 7-9 off the third rail. Should be fine there. Got a little straight, a little stretched. Shouldn't be a problem. He's been this close to the last 16 of the US Open once before, back in 2019 in Las Vegas. He's coming through the loser side, needed one win to get to the last 16, which was the number of players in single elimination that year, but was beaten by Ko Pin Chung. I commented on Ko Pin Chung that I felt like he was struggling a little bit this year, but it looks like he's got it figured out. I watched two or three of his matches, at least at parts, and he played really well. One of my favorite guys to watch. Happy to see him in form and still in the U.S. Open. Now, I've not seen many Hill Hill finishes today, but he came through one of them against Niels Fion. So he'll now be playing Jan Juski of Finland for a place in the quarterfinals tomorrow. Yeah, and hats off to Niels. He played a great match as well. Two dry breaks at the end to lose that match. And another guy, if he keeps at it, he's going to sneak in a big win again before he's done playing. So he's not going away here. Joshua Filler is all about flow and rhythm and fluency, but he hasn't had a chance to establish much in this match. Yes, he's in front, but only by one at 5-4. So the only other match still going today, over on table two, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz against Wu Kun, Kun Lin. That is seven all at the moment. How much thinking are you actually gonna have to do, Jeremy? Or do you have it in your head now? pretty much who your picks are going to be. I know you still have to wait and see, 
But there are only two eventualities now. We know it's Van Boning, Dominguez and Woodward or Van Boning, Dominguez and Steyer. So beyond that, do you have a pretty good idea now where your picks would go? Or do you maybe go and speak to Shane and some of the guys about it before deciding? Where are you at? Well, I'm, I always kind of communicate with Shane one way or another. Uh, it seems like that. And I'd be silly not to think about it a little more. Got, you know, more pool to watch, more time to work. No rush, right? So... Well, you course, say that. Of course, I got some ideas. Yeah, but I've been told that Matchroom are going to tell you you need to make the call next week. Well, yeah, that I did mm. know that, I think. Okay. So, or I was pretty sure that's the way it was going to happen. And if it changed, no big deal. But, yeah. But, I mean, not to sleep on it after this tournament process a little bit. You know, there's a lot of things to think about. You know, it's not... It's not just as simple as people think. You know, you think of combinations with teams, especially if a couple guys are right there real close to each other. Which going into this, I had a bunch of guys real close to each other. So, um, you know, and different values for different players. You know, you play a lot of doubles in that Moscone Cup. So definitely things to think about. But, yeah, I mean, to answer your question, I'm, I'm going to do both. I mean, I have combinations and ideas and things I'm leaning towards, of course. But I'd be silly not to maybe, you know, converse with a, a player or two that's on the team uh, that's been there and then also think about it myself. I assume you wouldn't do it before the event, but last couple of years, have you and Alex had a chat afterwards at any stage and asked each other, so why did you do this and what was your thinking there? Or do you just leave it that when it's over, it's over? Yeah, when it's over, it's over. I mean, of course, we always have uh, things that night, of course. Uh, we usually have to where the teams get together, maybe have a few drinks or whatnot. And to be honest with you, there could have been some things at times there that I don't remember just because we did have some fun, you know, here and there. And a lot of guys just, you know, you know how it is when the guys get with the guys and hanging out. And, but, yeah, I mean, probably one day. There's a few things I'd like to ask Alex about, but we're still in the dead heat of battle, so I don't know if he'd give me an honest answer or not. This looks like a lot of angle to be able to hold the ball. Is he trying to go over and back? Not been level since one all. Yeah, trying to l open up the pocket a little bit with the lighter speed. Probably wants to stun two rails here with a little bit of draw. That way he can come one rail off the five at the six. He really doesn't have to flirt and mess around with the seven, eight at all. Now he can go around those balls later on. Just keep it simple here. That center of the table is awfully open. Yeah, just like that. That's the line you want. Two rails off this four. Get sent to the one-loss side. He'd beaten Dino there and 
Lucas for Castle Werner. And lost 9 2 to Shane Van Boney in winner's qualification. That sent him to loser's qualification where he beat Sharik Syed of Singapore 9 4. And of course, that all led to that wonderful win against Federal Gorst earlier today 9 7 in the last 64. If he could add the scalp of filler, but surely go down as one of the greatest days of his pool playing life so far. With the big potential for more to come over the weekend. Yeah, when Tyler's, you know, at his best, even in these formats, he's breaking and running a rack here and there after winning a game. So we'll see if he gets out here and then can add some pressure with a break and run or two against Filler. First time in the match, he's going to win consecutive racks. And having trailed 5-3, Tyler Steyer is back on level terms at five apiece. Over on table two, Wu Kun Lin has taken it to the hill. 8-7, now the lead against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Winner of that plays Chang Young Lin in the last 16 tomorrow. I know it might depend on what happens in the matches, Jeremy, but do you see the captaincy as something you want to do for as long as it's available to you? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I do enjoy the heck out of it. I think I can improve on it all the time. Um, I love being around the guys, uh, match room, and, and, of course, the Euros, the fans, everyone. They've always been treated me really well. So comfortable in that position, and we'll you know, see what happens. But, yeah, I'd be, I'd be there for it. That's Team USA, so be hard to say no to that five all yeah, and remember the two boy cut in at five three later on if Tyler Steyer goes on to win this match that's the speed didn't lay off him as much that time and he's going to get a nice shot Now they all kissed right there by the corner, kept a lot of balls kind of grouped up, but very doable rack. The style Steyer plays with, it's not the fastest by any means, it's not a criticism, it's just the way he plays the game. And for someone like Filler, who is all action and wants to play with pace and fluency, he's spending a lot of time in his chair at the moment, and that can only add to the frustration and a little bit of anxiety may build. Well, it's amazing, you know, with pools, just like other sports where one team always, you know, whether it be a division rival or whatever you want to call it, seems to have struggles with another team or it's always going to be close one way or another, always a hard-fought test. And that seems to be the, the case between these two, even though you would have say Phil are definitely a favorite. That shows you how fickle it is. And want a little more draw out of that, but should be okay. All through the match, it's felt like he's been holding on to Filler's tail, stopping and pulling away. That's all well and good, but it doesn't get you there in the end. At some point, you've got to lead. He hasn't done that yet in this match. It's tantalizingly close now. Again, he's got a a nice size gap between the six seven just a matter can he get enough draw to avoid hitting the seven he's going to try and swing the ball back up table between the six seven back between the six nine may end up similar to where he's at now he's got to allow time for the draw to take that ripple of applause you heard before the one we've just had on table one it's coming from table two where Francisco Sanchez Ruiz on a big day for him when he's secured his Moscone debut has just leveled at eight all with Wu Kun Lin. Yeah, and you got to like, you know, one thing that Tyler at times had issues with. He'd try to make a lot of things up in one shot, you know, instead of kind of working through the rack and I get just a totally different feeling the entire year. You know, I think 
I wouldn't even call it the moment, maybe just a little bit, uh, you know, still learning kind of thing. But now he's really trying to, when you have such a great fundamental, of course, sometimes you, you lean on it. But really the key to that is knowing you can recover here and there so easily. So, you know, why go for something crazy? See a lot more of that in Tyler Starr here in 2022. He's had trouble putting away big matches in the past. It was the opposite today against Fedor Gorst. And all the signs are positive at the moment that he's comfortable with what he might be about to accomplish. Well, a big part of winning matches and then on to winning tournaments is improving as the match goes on. I know that sounds crazy. Of course, you've got to play great out of the gate. You can't afford a ton of mistakes, but... We see a lot the opposite sometimes from players to where they start out great, but then as tension rises, they actually, you know, sometimes play a little worse. Whereas I always see the guys that win the tournaments, they sometimes have a stumble or two at the beginning. Maybe it's just early matches, but no matter what, even if you start out playing pretty well, you end up playing better as the match goes. Well, he's absolutely doing that here. Total control of proceedings right now. Okay, I don't think he'll ease this in. No reason to. Might as well just go a natural three rails. <clears throat> Excuse me, Michael. And the main reason you do that is you don't want any kind of kick on the eight ball or anything like that. You put a little speed, it should be just fine. on the bounce for Tyler Steyer and the man from Wisconsin leads for the first time against Joshua Filler in this match at 6-5 three away from a famous win let's have a look in on table two Francisco Sanchez Ruiz just a few balls away he's had his struggles in this match but he's found his game towards the end of it he was in the last 16 here last year lost to Nayuki Oi on the brink of getting back there again. And when they come back on table one, we're going to go to split screen, so we'll be able to see the end of this. What a year he's having, Jeremy. Yeah, and he really is. You know, did a lot last year, maybe not quite the results, but you could see it in his play. But yeah, what a year. World Cup of Pool, of course. You know, his dream to make the Moscone Cup probably, uh-oh. Oh, what a terrible kiss right there. It's gonna happen the way the break is, but you know, his second kind of, you know, perfect scenario would be him and David both playing in that Moscone Cup. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Of course, that's a big decision for Alex Laley, but you, know, you definitely got to hand it to FSR. He's earned it. Well, although well, Katie can't qualify himself, I'm sure he was the first to congratulate his great friend. And back here, having worked so hard to keep Filler away from the table, Steyer has ended up scratching at the start of that rack. And Filler has stepped up, made the combination. They're level once again. So swiftly back to table two. A really good win this for FSR. For a lot of it, it looked as though it was going to be Wu Kun Lin going through to take on Chang Yun Lin in the last 16. 
What a day for the man from Spain. He's going to be a Moscone Cup player in a few weeks for the very first time. And now he's back in the last 16 of the US Open. Which leaves just one place left to be filled. 2-9 combination. He's taken Joshua Filler. Level once again. So having waited the whole match to go in front, Tyler Steyer is only there for a very brief period. They both need three. Yeah, that's a body blow, but it's one he can shake off. It really wasn't a mistake. And those balls didn't break that great there. Kind of came out of the rack a little funny, the one. One hit high, though, so that usually means the rack was just fine. I think he's got a peek at this. And this is maybe one you want to go for into the side, a little bit of a two-way shot. And the thing is, a lot of people just say, play the safety. Well, listen, early in the racks, when there's eight, nine balls on the table, when you get a snooker, that doesn't mean you're going to come away with a shot once the incoming player kicks at it or jumps at it. A lot of ways to get safe. So, again, you have a backdoor safety here, Michael, but you got to try and cut this in the side. Take it away from filler. He played the bank, so he was trying to trying to be aggressive, and that's correct. It feels like every time he's having to pull out a big shot under pressure, he's delivering, and as we've said in the past, that hasn't always been the case. So, it's a very encouraging signs for Tyler Steyer and his fans. Okay, he's sizing up how he wants to get on the four. This two ball is a little tricky. I mean, you just want to get kind of a one rail angle from just a little bit left of the eight ball with the cue ball here just to cut the three and come down that clear left side of the table. Well, I thought he would go rail first or maybe just stun above the eight. He's pretty close to this. This is taking a chance if he draws this ball. Yeah, all he needs is that cut on the three. Doesn't really need to be close to it. Okay, it looks like he's going to do what I was talking about. Just get up left of the eight. Yeah, that's fine. Got to make another nice shot here, but that's all right. It's more of that working mentality I was talking about, Michael, that I think is going to, you know, do great things for Tyler Steyer. I mean, that's when he gets his full advantage of his fundamental, in my opinion. Looks like good speed for the right-hander. Ooh, no, he got a little funny. Thought it was going to be better. He's lefties in trouble as far as an offensive shot. I like him shooting, though. I know the safety's easy, but he could bury him underneath the six, but I, I, I like him leaning over and cutting this ball in. Again, he comes up with the goods. Yeah, but he's just kind of piecing it together, and that's that's huge. You know, we were talking early in the day about how there's a group of players who've been winning these big fields, high prestige, historic titles like the US Open and the World Championship in recent years, and it's such a hard group to break into. Well, look how many players in that group. 
have gone out of this today. Shane Van Boning, Alban Ocean. Jason Shaw, Fedor Gorst. And, I mean, David Alcady, even, who's had a great couple years. Uh, you know, he's had a great career period, but even better the last few years. And, you know, I think it's a combination of a few things. Of course, that's just that big blue and green circle keeps spinning and players keep getting better. But I think it has a little bit to do with our new break format. I really do. The players a little bit underneath them are getting more time at the table. They're getting in that battle kind of tested, you know, area, zone, you might say, or whatever you want to call it. But, ooh, that one hurt. He's lucky he's not really on the 50 here. He's got the other pocket. Caught that one awfully thick. But I think, yeah, just, you know, learning how to roll out more, you know, letting them know they're in the match. I think all that kind of kind of adds up. We've had three of these big field matchroom events this year. Shane Van Boning won the World Championship. Joshua Fellow won the UK Open. Alban Ocean won the European Open. So two of them gone today. If Fellow was to lose here, they'd all be out. Yeah. It's really open a world of opportunity for so many guys over this weekend in Atlantic City. But I saw it with other players. I mean, like Pseudo Camino. I think he's made a little move upward. Played some really good matches this week. Many of the Kuwaiti players, again, keep showing up. Well, so absorbed. Both of these players, as we've said, married to lady players, and they're both in the audience. Well, the way he's cueing it, I don't know if he can get the cue ball to escape this rail here out of this pocket. He's trying to get to the side rail first. And I think he did just about as well as he could. And the main reason that is, is if he hit any harder, the draw doesn't take, and he may scratch right off that seven, so. Well, as Margaret fell over, Tyler Starr's wife, Nicholas Dillion, one of the American players sitting next to her. I think he's looking to cut this in and kind of zigzag the cue ball a couple rails to the near that left side pocket maybe. Watch this ball arc if he's doing what I think he's going to do, which is high with a little bit of right English. Oh, he's skewing downward. Okay, how's this going to run for him? Yeah. Can't question him too much. You know, maybe a little bit of body movement there with that shot, but, you know, he wanted to attack. He could have rolled it in softly, maybe, and taken a longer shot on the nine, but I understand. Classic case of... And just caught up with him eventually, that he wasn't getting in control of the situation, getting prime position. Yeah, and that all started really with an easy mistake on the six. Uh, getting, he had simple position on the seven. Hit the six fat, got him out of line, and cost him game number 13. It's a perfect position on the nine for Joshua Filler. So he's won two in a row now. He needs two more to go through. Some of the players who are still in it, who have not won an event of this stature before, Jeremy, who do you fancy most to make that big breakthrough? I know you're going to say Tyler because he's American, but other than that? Well, oh, absolutely, Tyler. Um, and you've got Lechner in there. Yanni Uski you've been talking about. Yeah. I mean, does Chang count? I mean, Chang hasn't won a U.S. Open nine ball or a World nine ball championship, correct? Yeah. Well, I mean... It would be a step forward for him. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be a surprise to anyone, right? He's gotten beaten many big finals along with some other wins. 
Got Kazakis there as well, of course. Yeah, he, and you know what? The World Masters, but. Well, I was very impressed that he had to bounce right back after that match with Shane. And, you know, he's playing a guy that was ready over there. And obviously, Alex is ready. He played great. But it's easy to have a little letdown after such a big win. And we all know, or if you're around it, that pool means everything to Alex Kazakis. And these big titles is what he wants to have on his side. So, if, you know, easy to have a letdown after a big win like that. So he's definitely a threat. Back to rack 14. How has this finished up for him? Well, he's got a cross side bank. I think he's trying to see is there something better because there's a big group of balls at the bottom of your screen here. A lot of times the players will find an easy way to play a snooker. But he can't really get the cue ball, so he may try and play the two ball underneath. You know, bank it a couple rails towards the six, something like that. Tell you, I mean, you can't discount Mario He, right? I mean, he's in there. Sanchez Ruiz, finalist of the UK Open this year. And really the type of spirit and the type of player that can take it away from one of these guys. You know, Coping Chang, right? He's won the World 10 ball, I believe, uh, but never a World 9 ball or a U.S. Open, obviously, and he's in form. Mario He, who you mentioned there, knows about big stage success after all his exploits in the World Cup. So a fascinating couple of days ahead. But which of these two men will still be around to be part of it all? Yeah, he wants to cut the two to the bottom round, get it up behind. Behind the four and the six. And let the cue ball come off the left side rail, in rail, and up behind the nine and all that. Now, I wouldn't get so involved trying to make this. It looks like a free shot trying to make it roll in your ball. But if you hang it, Josh is going to try and find a way to make it, kicking at the ball, jumping at it. So I definitely just play the all-out safety here, I think. Is he going to the jump cue? Didn't appear like he was really fully snookered here, huh, Michael? Looks like he's got his right half of the two. Yeah, certainly seems to be a bit of it sticking out. Yeah, you would normally play off of that, especially with the ball so far away from the pocket. So, all right, he's put the jump cue away. I think this is smart. Good thing it didn't hang, which he was kind of planning on. Now, Josh, you'd like to think he can kick this and kind of just hold the ball, but easy not to get a rail here if you come underneath it, which he has to do. So he may have to put a little speed on this one way or another, either catch the two thin or put speed on the two. Well, watch out. Oh. Well, that would have been some way to get to the hill. And I don't think he's left the gap, but he's left a doable jump shot. Really solid hit on the two ball. Yeah, he can't dig on this too much because that upper right-hand corner is a bit of a threat as far as for the cue ball. So these guys are so good with the jump cue here, Michael. He'll stun this even though he's jumping it and go to the top rail with the cue ball and then back up for the three. Uh, this 
Oh, hang about. No, it's not going to get there. Yeah, treacherous little run out here, though. A lot of work. What's going to be the key shot to this now? Well, you know, if you look across the spot, right, the four is playable from there. It's just a matter of getting from there off the three or getting to there off the three. Josh creates so well. So this is actually perfect. Look how clear the left side of the table is. He can cut this in and just come right down the table, right where he's putting his cue stick. This is, I think, really ideal. That's got to go. I don't think he got there. Yeah, that's a big mistake. And he, I think he can bang the four away, three rails. But at least Tyler's coming back to the table, right? He's going to have a chance. He's had quite a few moments like that in this match where he's looked to be in good position and then he does something unexpected. Steyer's got off the hook a number of times. Yeah, now Tyler would love to kick across this ball two rails and come across the face of the four and let the cue ball drift down underneath the six and eight. That would be like, you know, if you dialed it up on your PlayStation or whatever you <laughs> play pool on, but... But I wouldn't get too involved with that just because, you know, you could whiff the entire ball trying to be so precise. So is he going to the jump cue now? Okay. So this tells me the five passes the four, Michael. I don't think he would want to jump at this without a reward. Now this, when you're close to it and you're going a long ways away, hard to get a ton of speed. So probably either makes it or gives up a shot. And I got a lot on it. shot there from filler another one of those kick shots you could easily scratch on he's going to the right side rail looks like to me he's going to kick three rails up underneath it bottom rail left side rail top rail off to the back of the four now you have to play the bend here so we'll get a good look at the cue ball kind of arcing off this first rail towards the left side rail and if you're confident with this kick, I think he needs to aim a little bit further to our right, to be honest with you, and spin into that angle. But if you're comfortable with this kick, it's a better kick shot than the right side rail because a lot of ways to get safe. There's no real scratch there. <coughs> now the only thing I see is an issue. We'll see where he kind of aims. If he's playing it with a straight high ball, he's got to get the arc here or else he'll end up just kind of missing it two rails or off the end rail. And he got the arc. And he got a double kiss. Needs that ball to spin a little bit.
Well, what's he playing here? Does the five go past the six? I think it does squeeze by, but now he's in a he's in a place now where position's difficult. Like naturally cutting it with a high ball, I think you're going towards a scratch. Not sure if that's what he's looking at now, but yeah, I don't know if I'd shoot at a half a pocket here. I don't know if he can really get shape unless he draws off the seven, maybe, or something like that. I hate to have to play safe, but I might edge the purple five, just kind of rock it over the top of the eight and drop the cue ball down here by this lower right-hand corner pocket. I'm talking so much about the Moscone today. He's in the European team. So disappointed to miss out in 2018. And then went to the US Open a few months later in Las Vegas and beat three members of the team he'd been left out of on his way to the title. That's what you call making a point. Yeah, and I wonder if he's considered the 5 6 combo. The five, he's like dead lined up on the 5 6. It looks like perfectly, and it'd be a combo that he doesn't miss. I bet he just not, doesn't see it. Because the five will escape a couple rails off the six, I think, anyways. So he's looking at still playing the five, trying to produce some type of shot on the six. I think this is a scratch with a high ball. And the main reason is he can't, he doesn't have the entire pocket on the five, so he's got to cut it a little to the inside part of the pocket, which doesn't help getting the cue ball in the position for the six. I don't think he's ever looked at the combo, but to me, it looks like he's just lined up perfectly on it. Maybe he sees it now. That little gesture he just made with his little eyebrows kind of like moving up and down, I think. Maybe he sees that combination. Yeah, it's like he's saying, oh, that's interesting. Right. Oh, no, he's still uh, sizing up the five. Yeah, so I guess he's looking at He's going to go by the seven. If he shaves the seven here, he could easily scratch. Oh, he's ducking. Prudent play. way so he's going to bend the ball with a lot of draw English most players would kick before the side with left spin here top you know on the high side of that left side pocket and use a little left English to dive down at the purple five you got a chance to kick behind it send it up table this way he's going for more of the make trying to draw the ball and make it arc The leg being flung out there. A moment of anxiety as he briefly flirted with the scratch. A good outcome. Yeah, he doesn't want that back, all things considered, right? Now this, he better hit well. If he doesn't get the snooker here, he probably takes the worst of it. Super nice play there from Josh. I don't know if he can go between the 7-8 here. If he can, that would be the way to go. Looks like he's going to go two rails, maybe. Oh, no, he's shooting straight at it. Does he have a little piece of the 5? And that's what I was saying. With the 6-7-8 lined up the way they are, if Josh doesn't get the snooker on that shot he played, and a lot of times he'll end up with the worst of it here in a moment.
Well, Josh knows all the shots from here. That purple five was there just moments ago. Still not easy on the rail behind the ball, kind of a blind pocket. Finally, the breakthrough. And is it going to be three racks in a row for Joshua Filler? Winning tournaments all over the world through the year. Nice. Gold in the World Games, gold in the European Championships, a couple of Euro Tour wins. The UK Open in London back in May. He would top all that if he was to land a second US Open crown here in Atlantic City on Saturday. Yeah, and I just, the way he strikes the ball, it just never gets old watching him play. It just, I guess, maybe a Ben Hogan kind of guy for golf, right? I mean, just, they're all unique, all the great ball strikers for one reason or another, and he's definitely one of them. Well, my goodness, it's been hard work. He's had to battle for it all the way. But he patiently carved out the chance, and he's taken it very effectively. So Joshua Filler was 6-5 down in this match. He's now on the hill, leading 8-6. What's going on in Steyer's mind now, Jeremy? He's put so much into this match. He's got nothing to feel bad about or criticize himself about, whatever happens now. But what's in his head at this point, having put so much into it and still finding himself needing to win the last three racks? Well... I mean, that's kind of like a match. We, I think it was Phil and I that did earlier. I can't remember the two players at the moment. But, you know, you put all this energy in there to only be behind two games. You know, if Josh makes a mistake here and there, whatever it is, you're only behind by one, but you're in striking distance. You know, as an underdog, you do all that hard work to try and steal it at the end, and sometimes you just win easily. But but uh, Josh definitely knows Tyler Stires in this match. and. I hope Tyler Steyer remains to where he knows it as well. And I know we keep bringing everything back to the Moscone today, but it is a big day in the context of that tournament. Whatever happens now, if he loses, we know Steyer can't get automatic qualification. He has done his case for a captain's pick. No end of good today with the way he's played in both his matches. Yeah, and, you know, he's definitely made that argument. Um to be thought of and considered and we'll see how this match plays out but he's he's fighting and, and that's a big part of the Moscone Cup and no re no no apologies bringing up the Moscone multiple times I mean that's a huge part of American pool and I'm sure the fans out there don't mind talking about it whenever you bring it up the European race will go into tomorrow we know Joshua Filler and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz have got two of the three automatic spots Albin Ocean currently holds the other one but he can't improve his position after getting knocked out earlier today Mario he can overtake his great friend former World Cup teammate with a run to the final all the other contenders they know they have to win the whole thing reminder down to the last 16 tomorrow first up on the TV table Chris Melling the only British player still in the event of the four who made it to single elimination will be up against Lee Van Corteza Joshua Filler closing in on the last 16 he still needs one more okay we've had a lot of battles in this match here and we'll see what happens with this rack but even though he's next to the two, nothing easy. The eight near the pocket. Two kind of lined up towards the nine, but not the type of shot you would play. I wouldn't doubt if we see a really solid safety here from Josh. Uh, not really wanting to go too risky. He knows he's in jeopardy here of getting beat.
Yeah, it just doesn't sit right to easily knock the two away and put them behind the four. You know, like if the five wasn't there, right, he'd just shoot the two straight on, knock it around the table, draw up on the four. But the five's a little in the path of that two ball. This is touchy. Now, if he knew he was going to hit the two with the cue ball, uh, with the four, five ball, he may draw behind the four here and hope the five stops the two. I think that's maybe what he's doing. Okay, he played it anyways. Ooh, got by the point. That was a big part of it. He's grown as a player and as a competitor today across his two matches, whatever the outcome is to be now. Times in the past, he's been close to pulling off big wins and hasn't really been able to get the job done. But even if he was to lose this rack and that was to be the end of the match, this wouldn't be one of those instances he could look back with obvious disappointment at losing, but also a huge amount of satisfaction at the way he's performed and Kept his composure. Yeah, needs a little fortune on this kick shot one way or another. A solid hit is going to give up a nice shot for Josh, though, and we know what the percentage on, on that is, Michael. Not good for Tyler. And this is a little off angle. I don't know if he can just roll forward easily off the two. I think he can, but... Good thing for Josh. It doesn't need much on the three because the four's over the side. The winner of this will play Eklund Kachi of Albania in the last 16 tomorrow. The fillers met him a couple of times in important matches this year. Beat him in the final of a Euro Tour event in Italy back in May. And they met in the last 64 of the European Open in Fulda in August, and it was an absolute cracker of a match. Then we're coming through in a hill-hill finish. Yeah, Kachi should have really won that match. I think, uh, but I think Kachi's in form. I watched him play here and talked to him, and he's pretty honest with me if, if how he's feeling, right? And he's like, I'm playing, I'm playing really well, so. No coincidence, he's into that final 16. Well, Tyler Steyer has fought the good fight. Did manage to get in front at 6-5. But a scratch on the break at the start of the next rack proved to be a significant turning point. Because if Joshua Filler pots these last three balls, he will have finished off with a run of four racks in a row. And it looks as though it's just about time to congratulate Skylar Woodward. He, along with Oscar Dominguez, is going to end today having clinched his place alongside Shane Van Boning in the US Moscone Cup team. It's over to you now, Jeremy, to name the two remaining members of that side who will try to get the trophy back from a Europe team which is blessed with wonderful talents and great competitors like Joshua Filler, who is through to the last 16 and four wins away from his second US Open title. Tyler Steyer, so disappointed you can see there, but he has nothing to admonish himself about. Let's look at the numbers behind the result then. What can you pick out of this, Jeremy, to tell us the story? Well... He had a break and run, I think, uh, a couple of them there, Tyler did. But he had a couple dry breaks as well that really kind of led towards some games lost. And long pot success, a couple of them got away. Safety error is six. That's a big one because normally when you're playing safe, you're pretty sure what you're doing. But overall, I mean, you've got to be impressed, working hard.